all the glory we give you all the oh lord we give you all the glory we give you all the we give you all the glory we give you all the praise god praise god hallelujah praise god amen praise god hallelujah praise god amen praise god hallelujah praise god amen praise god hallelujah praise god rejoice rejoice hallelujah rejoice amen rejoice hallelujah rejoice worship the God that has been good to us in this house, the God that has been good to us personally. I want all to give him glory. I want all to give him honor. I want all to give him adoration for his faithfulness. I want all to thank him because this God is good. He's good at all times. He's good at all situations, in all circumstances. Our God is good. Let's bless and worship him. Let's thank him for his faithfulness. Let's thank him for where he has started with us. Let's thank him for where we are. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration from the first Bible study of the month to the last one. Let's appreciate this God. This God is good. This God is kind. This God is nice. This God is mighty. This God is marvelous. Let's thank him for the word we have had. Even from this very house, from the altar, let's thank him for the Holy Spirit that kept teaching us, showing us revelation, insight, inspiring us, empowering us. Let's thank him for the word. Let's thank him for the blood. Let's thank him for his name. His name that we call the answer. Let's thank him for hope in heaven. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. Let's magnify his holy name. Let's thank him for what he will do tonight. Let's thank him for the touch. Let's thank him for the revelation. Let's thank him for the inspiration. Let's thank him for the empowerment. Let's thank him for every verse that God is going to use tonight. Let's worship and honor him. For as many that will join us online, that will join us in the house, let's appreciate and worship him for the intention of the word of God is going to stand, is going to come to pass. Let's bless and worship him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, wonderful God. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want you to speak talk to God tonight that God, please speak to me. I don't want to hear the voice of man. I want to hear you directly. Lord, please speak to me tonight. Lord, speak to me. Speak to me in the language that I understand. Daddy, be deliberate with me tonight, oh Lord my God. Daddy, communicate with me, oh Lord my God. I want to hear you. Let's go ahead and begin to pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we have come before you to hear your word, not the word of man. Daddy, please speak to us individually. Speak to us as a family. Speak to us, oh Lord my God, as individual. Daddy, speak to us, oh Lord. We want to hear you. We want to give us understanding. We want you to communicate with us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, we want to bless you tonight because you are God. 
We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. That it be exalted in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We have come tonight, O oh Lord my God, to worship, to fellowship, to hear from you and to learn, even under your feet, Daddy, we pray. Please, Lord, tonight, teach us in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We bind every spirit that may want to manipulate or misrepresent the word of God. We command them to go into bondage in the name of Jesus. We declare clarity of thought and mind that it, that it be so to each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We bind every spirit that is not of God. We frustrate the agenda of the enemy. We disappoint their devices. We declare them null and void over the service of tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. We hand over to you, Lord, that you might take control. Amen. Holy Spirit, take control. Teach us by yourself. Amen. And at the end of the service, let all the glory be given unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah.
before we love him. And there is no way we can out love him. His love is greater than our love for him. Let's just bless Jesus. Thank him because he loves you. Thank him because he chose to love you. It is not, we are not the one that forced him to love us. There's nothing that we do that can make him to love us, but he chose to love us. Let's give him glory for this. Let's appreciate him. Let's exalt him. Let's magnify him. So even when we are unlovable, he loves us. Even while we are yet a sinner, Bible says that he died for us because he loves us. Bless him because he loves you. Thank you, Daddy, because you love me. Thank you, Almighty God, because your love is great. Your love is mighty. Your love is deep. For me and my household, for every member of this household, I say thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, we bless you because you are God. We exalt you, Lord my God, as we go into your word. That is speak to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give us understanding. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. You see that our God is a faithful God. We want to welcome everyone online. I know that I'm out. I want to welcome you to Reflection Hour. This is a place where we dig deep into the word of God. And I know that today God is going to speak to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God will speak to me and speak to every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You know this month has been the month of good mayor. And just like that, like yesterday, we started the teaching on Sunday, on Wednesday, and today is the last uh, Wednesday in the month of, uh, of May. And we give God the glory. We give God the honor for joining with us, for teaching us, for opening our eyes to giving and to good measure as well. And I know today God is going to do one trust in your life and in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. So we are looking at good measure part seven. So as many that miss any of this, you can go and check it on our our Facebook page, or you can go on our YouTube, go and check it there, and I believe God that is going to bless your soul in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good mayor, part seven. Our anchor scripture, let's read it together, I believe we have it on the screen. I thought that's going to be there, must be serious and make sure that uh, you are ready for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Good mayor, press down and shaking together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same mayor that ye met with her, it shall be mayor to you again. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. I said we have looked at this very chapter, I mean this very topic. We have looked at it. We have considered the six questions of life and we have exploited. We have looked at what to give. We have looked at who to give to. We have looked at uh, why we give. And we as well look at um, the where to give to. That was what we, we, we considered last. And how we give. We have looked at six questions. 
We have address given from all these six, six questions. And tonight, we want to look at what to do after we have given. Praise the Lord. After you have done the giving, after you have done all that is required of you, with all the knowledge and the understanding and revelation that each and every one of us have, after we have looked at them, after you have done what is expected, then what should you do after you have given? So, that is what we want to look at tonight. And I'm trusting God that God will speak to us individually in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said before, uh, we can look at or know what to do after we have given. We need to have the mindset of the farmer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because every farmer is a giver. Amen. Amen. Where did they give to? Where did they, who can tell us? Where did the farmer, where did they give to? The they give to the soil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it is what they give to the soil that the soil give back to them, right? No. Is, is no. that true? Yes. Why is it not true? Yeah. It will multiply. It will multiply, yes. So it's going to be bigger. Yeah. And sometimes the ground can even eat it. Nothing might come out of it. Praise, praise the Lord. So, we know that the, the farmer is a giver. And he has something in his mind before he go to the farmland to give. And what is in his mind? Harvest. 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 And if he has that harvest in his mind, he doesn't mind what he face when he gets to, get to the land. He doesn't mind how things are tough, how hard things, what makes him to go through that very tough and rigor times and all those kind of challenges is what? Harvest. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So, the first thing we want to consider under that is expectation. Praise the Lord. What is it? After you have given, what is the next thing to do? And this is where a lot of Christians are missing it. This is where many believers are doing what? They are, they are missing it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give to God without expectation. We give to God because, as a requirement. We give to God uh, sometimes uh, out of emotion. Some people are, they, some, some, they remember a particular pastor that said that, he said my people are emotional givers. Praise the Lord. People that give by emotion, they will regret at last. Praise the Lord. They are the type of people, after they are giving, finish, they go back and they regret of say, what, what, what come upon me in the first place? Praise the Lord. I was listening to a particular preacher and he was talking that there are some people that gave to his ministry. He said, and he's telling the truth. And after he has given, he said, they called, those who gave, he said, and they called the, they called the accountant and said, Sir, I think we are, I'm sorry, I think I mistakenly gave so so, 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 thing. Can you please send it back to us? Praise, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the living Jesus. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about expectation. After you have given, the next thing you need to do is what? Expectation. And I want to also consider this before I go further into this teaching. Why? Because many of us, we practice this thing. After you have worked, for two weeks. Some people they work for one week. Some people they work for one month. At the end of the month, how many of us expect salary? Wages. Everybody. Eh? Okay. Praise the Lord. So, how do we feel? If you get to your bank account, many of us that do direct entry, and you get there, and the place was empty, eh? how are you going to feel? Uh, okay, now what will you do? We just say, uh, God give it, God take it, glory be to God. Will you do that? No. Eh? No. Now, the reason why we don't do that, why is it that we don't do that? Why is it that we don't do that? Praise the Lord. Who can tell me why is it that we don't do that? Because we have worked for it. Because we have sowed the seed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So if they don't pay you, you have what? Right. You have the right, praise the Lord, to so do what? Either to sue them or to do something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Something we can't mention yet, right? Yes. 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 The annoyance can come out of a Christian. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
there are some people that go out in a country where they don't pay them after they are worked for months. They go out on protest, right? Praise the Lord. But the challenge now is that how come we have that kind of expectation when we go to our work? And when we come to the house of God, we don't have that kind of expectation. Praise the Lord. That is the challenge. When you give to God, why is it that we don't have that kind of expectation when we don't see results? Praise the Lord. Because maybe we don't have all, let me just straight up. Why is it that we don't have that kind of expectation? We think giving is an obligation. We see it as obligation. Because they force us to do it. Praise the Lord. Who else have another uh, answer? Yes? You you have not been working. Praise the Lord. Sorry. Because we think that uh, nobody is going to ask us or challenge us. What I'm saying is, you after you have given, you don't see results. And you just think that it's just normal. Whereas after you are giving your time, your gas, your intelligence, you have done all the duty that is required in your place of work, and you don't get, you reacted, right? Yes. But when you come to the house of God, why is it that we don't react? We don't give with expectation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't give with, and that is not the answer. And that is where many of us are missing it. We are looking at it as a requirement. Yes. We are paying our tithe because we don't want to rob God. Yes. We are paying our tithe because we consider as a debt that we owe God. And that is the reason why many of us, you are giving your tithe, but you don't see results and you still keep giving. And after a while, you can be tired. After some people now started, started sending all kinds of messages about tithe and this. Yes, now, I don't see now. Why? This is the reason. Because you give, you don't expect from God. Praise the Lord. God said, bring forth your what? Strong reason. When your boss did not pay you, will you just say, I am entitled now? Are you not going to come forth with what? Strong reason. That everybody around you will support to say, this man is a wicked man. This woman is a wicked man. The government is not doing it, right? But how come we, 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 we exercise faith in our place of work, in other areas, but towards God that is bigger, that can compensate us more than any other person, we don't exercise that faith. Praise the Lord. That is why Jesus said that. He said the children of the uh, darkness of this world he said they are what? They are wiser than the children of the life. kingdom of the life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Expectation is key. And that is why many of us, we have been missing it. And sometimes maybe because of the, the doctrine that we receive, that position us to see ourselves as a debtor unto the Lord when we are given. We don't see God as a blessed God. So when we don't see results, we don't think that it's just normal. Whereas when you put maize into your farmland, and if that thing does not produce, you will be questioning it and be querying it. And you cannot put maize and expect beans to come out. If you put maize or corn inside your farmland, and what you are seeing is beans, eh? How are you going to feel? Praise the Lord. So, do we see now how many believers are not exercising their faith towards the right things of life? How we are major in minor and we are minor in major. The Bible says, Hebrew 11 says, that without faith, right? It is what? It did not say maybe. He said it is impossible. When something is impossible, it can happen. But when we go to work, we exercise everybody exercise faith. The reason why you sit where you seated is because you believe that seat will not do what? 
will not fall you. That, that seat can carry your weight, right? If you don't trust the seat, will you sit on it? No. The reason why you allow a driver to drive you is because you have faith, right? Even without showing you his or her driver license. Praise the Lord. The reason why you allow the pilot to fly the airplane is because you have faith that is an expert without showing you his certificate. Whether it's a failure or not, you don't know. Praise the Lord. So we see where we exercise our faith. Whereas where we support to exercise our faith, we are not doing that. Praise the Lord. So there is need for us to do what? To expect. I said it is commonly said that expectation is the mother of manifestation. Expectation is the mother of manifestation. I said your expectation will determine your actions and reaction towards circumstances. When you don't expect, if you don't get anything, nothing changed, right? Life continues. But when you are expecting something and you don't see it, your reaction will change, right? How do you feel about disappointment? How do you react? Praise the Lord. You might be about disappointment, but the best way that you, you put your trust in confidence, or no, Bible says we shouldn't put confidence on money, but somebody that you so much trusted and it let you down, no matter how anointed you are, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. you will react somehow. Hey, right? Yes. Praise the Lord. The same way, God said, Prove me. He didn't say, Prove me on any other thing, no. It's only on giving that He said, Do what? Prove me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. So I said expectation. What is expectation? Is a strong belief that something will happen. Strong belief that something will do what? Yeah. Will happen. Or a belief that someone will or should achieve something. It's a strong belief. That you are going to achieve something. So we must have expectation towards God. After you have done all that is required. With all the knowledge that we have, that we have, we have gone through in the course of the week, we must have expectation. Let's look at Proverbs 23, verse 18, and Proverbs 10, 24b. Who wants to help us? For surely, For surely there, is an end, there is an end, and thy expectation, and thy expectation shall not be cut short. Say, my expectation, my expectation shall not be cut short. But the question is, do you have expectation? Why are you serving God? You must have expectation. You must do what? Have expectation. In the book of Acts chapter 3, the Bible told us of a man that was laid from his back. They born him like that. Not because of sin. He was born like that. But the reason why he received his healing is because he had expectation. Praise the Lord. You will not be disappointed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, because somebody help us read that Proverbs 10, 24b. But the desire of the righteous shall be, shall be granted. What is the desire? Expectation. And what is expectation that we have been talking about? It is good measure. Press down together. Shaking. Press down, shaking together. And running over. These are the Expectation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. After expectation, the second thing you need to do, you cannot just say, I'm expecting, and just sit down like that. The second thing that you need to do is do what? Water the seed. Amen. Amen. The farmer will not just plant and go and sleep till the day of harvest. Have you ever seen any farmer like that? No. no. He will do what? That will be what will be in his mind. He will be thinking about it. Every day we go and check whether a thing happens or a thing does not happen. He will do what? He will go on and check. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Isaiah 55 verse 10. Isaiah 55 verse 10. You need the water. Your seed needs to be watered. Yes? Who wants to help us? Isaiah 55. For as the rain cometh down. As the rain cometh down. And the snow from heaven. And the snow from heaven. And returneth not. They returneth not. 
either. But the water rests the, the head. And maketh it bring forth and bud. What does it say? He maketh what? He maketh it to bring forth and to bud. That it may give seed to the sower. What did he give to the sower? Seed. seed. And, and bread to the eater. So, whatever you have, those are the division that that thing is divided into. Anything that comes into your hand, inside of it there is seed. And inside of it there is what? There is bread. There is oven. There is bread inside. If you eat your seed with your bread, that person will do what? That person will suffer. He will struggle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why that place told him. He said, uh, when the rain falls, he gives seed to the sower. So that you will continue to have more. You have something to sow. And he gives bread to the, to the eater. Praise the Lord. Now, I said, I said there are two categories of water. Naturally, naturally, the rain, the rain, water the seed. Natural. Then, when the rain did not water it, then we have to do what? We have to introduce the artificial, artificial way. Praise the Lord. We have to introduce the artificial, artificial way. So the rain, is divided into two, and the two are important. Amen? Amen. The rain are two, or they are divided into two, and the two are very, very important. We have the first one, which is the early rain. Early rain. And I also want to look at Deuteronomy 11, 13 to 15 for us. The early rain. Who want to help us? The two rain. And it shall, shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. If you, if you, if you shall hearken diligently unto my commandment. Yes. Which I command you this day. Yes. To love the Lord your God. Yes. And to serve Him with all your heart. Yes. And with all your soul. Yes. That I will give you the rain of your land. I will give you rain of your land. Yes. In its due season. In its due season. The first rain and the latter rain. Do you see that? He said the first rain. And the what? And the Praise the Lord. Those are the two. The question is, what did they do? The first rain and the latter rain. If all you get is just only the first rain, what do you think will happen to the crop? Mm -hmm. Eh? It won't mature. Even the fruit, the fruit, the sweet fruit, that only receive the first rain, they only receive the first rain. By the time it comes to harvest, if the other, the latter rain did not fall on it, it will taste good. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. So, both rain, they are important. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 5, 24. The latter rain. Yes? Who wants to help us with that? Who wants to help us with that? Jeremiah 5, 24. Let us say they in their hearts. Yes. Let us now fear the Lord our God. Yes. That given rain. Yes. Both the former and the later. Praise the Lord. That's another version. He said the former and the, and the latter. So these are the two rain that you need over your, over your, over your seed. Praise the Lord. Over your giving. These are the things that makes it to mature. Amen. Amen. So, we have seen that it's not only by giving, but you need your seed to bear to be watered. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's look at the second way. The second way. When you don't have rain, when everything is dry, eh? then, are you going to sit down and be washing like that? No. no. Then, that will not take us to artificial means of watering the seed. Amen. Amen. That is what is referred to as irrigation. Irrigation. Let's look at the book of Genesis 26, 12 to 22. Genesis. Digging well. Yes. Genesis so in that Isaac sow in that land. And receive in the same year. He received in that, that year. 
hundredfold. Hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Yeah, Lord bless him. And the, and the man was great. He was great. And went forward. And went forward. And green unto it became very great. It became very great. For he had he had possession of flocks. Yes. And possession of eggs. Yes. And great son of servants. Yes. And the Philistines envied him. Yes. For all the wealth. Which his father's servants as did. Yes. In the days of Abraham his father. Yes. And the Philistines are had a stop in, a stop them, and feed them with eggs. Yes. And Abin Melech said unto Isaac, Yes. Go from us, mm -hmm. for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed them. He departed from that place. And fish is spent in the valley of Gera. Yes. And dwelt there. Yes. And Isaac did again the dwell. So the, now the, the Bible is now telling us the secret of the success of Isaac. Because at that particular time there was a famine. There was a famine. How did he have 100% during the period season of, of famine? Praise the Lord. Uh, yes, continue, ma. Children, go and sit down. When they are dig in the days of Abraham, his father, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names which, by which his father had called them. And as six servants dig the valley in the valley and found there a well of springing water. Yes. And the headman of Gera did strive with Isaac Edman. Yes. Saying, the water is ours. Yes. And he called the name of the well Essex. Yes. Because they strove with him. Yes. And they dig another well mm. and strove. For, for that also. Yes. And he called the name of it Sigma. Yes. And he removed from them mm. and dig another way. He kept digging. And for that, yes. they stroke not. They stroke not. And he called the name of it Re Reobo. Yes. And he said, He said, Now the Lord has made, now the Lord has done what? made, made room for, for us. And we shall be fruitful. And we land. shall be fruitful in the land. You can see. And they were striving with him, he didn't give up. Because he needed wealth for his wealth to continue. Because at that particular time there was no rain, it was famine. So, despite the fact they struggled with him to dig well at that particular time, it's not an easy task. Because the ground is hard, very, very hard. But the Bible recorded that he kept digging because he needed to get water. So, you need to water your seed. And in the kingdom, what do we use to water our seed? And who can tell us? What do we use to water our seed? Prayers. 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 You use prayers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You need to pray. Because the day you are sowing, they are a power that has seen the future and know that, oh, this one wants to get out of poverty. Then they will now rise up. That's why you need to pray. You need to pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. That seed can be a waste. Remember what we told us on Sunday. Where people sow. The wayside. What happened to the wayside seed? seed? The bird comes and do what? And pick it up. So there are some people, the way they sow. That's the way the enemy is taking it away. I pray, enemy will not hit your seed in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, we need to water our, our seed. Number three thing that we need to do, which is very, very important. And I want us to turn to the book of Matthew 13, which is watch out. Everybody say watch out. Watch out. You need to watch. Okay, before that, I want us to look at Matthew 26, 41 first, before we come back to this. Yeah. Watch out. You watch out. Watch out. It is important. You watch, you watch out. Matthew 26, 41. Who wants to help us? After you watch expect water, yes. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. That you enter not into temptation. That you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. The spirit is willing. But the flesh is willing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to ask a question. And it's very, very simple. What did Jesus say we should do first? Did he say we should pray and watch? Or watch and pray. Why? Why didn't Jesus say that? Pray and watch. 
what you want to observe in your observation, you're watching that you pray about. Praise the Lord. It is what you see that we determine your prayer point. Unfortunately, many people are just praying. They pray and they don't watch. Why some people watch? They know when the enemy is attacking them, but they don't do what? They don't pray. Why some are praying before they now start watching? Praise the Lord. Depends on how we see. But the first thing that Jesus mentioned is watch. When the rain started falling, when the rain began to fall upon your seed, your giving, many things will come out. Praise the Lord. That is why we need to do what? We need to watch. You need to watch. We are going to get into that. Let me quickly just... I said, what does it mean to watch? It means we need to pay attention. Pay attention. Look at your life. Look at your finances. Look at the work that you're doing. Pay what? Attention. Don't let it slip by. If you have the understanding of what we are saying now, about 10 years ago, you have been doing it, you, your life will not be afraid. Praise the Lord. Eh? Things would have changed for each and every one of us. I said, what does it mean to watch? It means to be sensitive. Amen? Amen. And praise the Lord. Three, I said it means to be at a last. It means to look attentively over a period of time. A period of what? A period of time. What does it mean to watch? It means to look at or gaze at or stare at something. What does it mean to watch? It means to observe. It means to view or survey. What does it mean to watch? It means to fix one's eyes on something. What does it mean to watch? It means to inspect. You must inspect your life. You must inspect your giving. What does it mean to watch? It means to scrutinize and examine or study. What does it mean to watch? It means to take notes of. What does it mean to watch? It means to behold. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's look at the book of Matthew 13. And I want to read from verse 24. So that we have the clear picture of what we are talking about. Another parable put it forth unto them. Yes. Saying, it says, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto, kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man. Yes. We sow good seed. We sow, we give good offering, give things in the house of God outside. Give, yes. But when men slept. When men what? Slept. His enemy after you give no expect to just go and relax what did the bible say the enemy came and they saw tears praise the lord they saw what they saw tears and what did they do did they wait there no and they leave and they leave and on fire, continue, man. Let's see. And went his way. He went his way. But when the blade was thrown off, do you see now? When the enemy saw tears, nobody is aware. Until when they do what? Started germinating. That's why I'm saying, watch. As you are sowing good seed, there are powers, people that want to sow bad stuff there. And when they saw it, you will not know that they are sowing it. Until when things start growing. You now sometimes you look at your children, you start seeing certain things growing up in their life. And you say, where did they get this? You will hear what the master of the house said. Yes, continue, man. And brought forth fruit. It brought forth fruit. Then appeared the taste also. Do you imagine what it takes something to grow, to mature, and to bring forth fruit? That is the work of the enemy. I pray. The seed of the enemy will not be fruitful in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. If there is anything they have sown into your life, into your career, into your finances, the fire of God will consume them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, ma'am. So the servant of the householder, the servant of the household man, came and said unto him, they came and said unto him, Sir, sir did not thou sow good seed? Did didn't thou, thou sow good seed? From whence? From whence? Then, 
it yes, where I am from whence then hath he the tears. He said unto them, An enemy has done an this. Enemy has done this. And they said unto him, Without them that we go and gather. He said, Should we go and gather now? But he said, It is okay, let us leave it there because we are not going to wait to the, to the harvest. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. We are not going to wait to harvest. We are going to pray. That Sunday, we are going to pray on Sunday and we are going to pray prayers. We are going to pray concerning this thing in our first and the last program. Whatever the enemy has sown in your life, it must be uprooted. Whatever they are sown in your finances, it must be what? It must be rooted out. Praise the Lord. Then that takes us to the next point. The next point, which is what do you do? What to do after giving? You weed out. Amen. You do what? You weed out. What does it mean to weed out? What does it mean to weed out? It means to discard. It means to remove or to approach. It means to eject. It means to root out. Whatever you have not planted, whatever you have seen, and you know that this is not what I planted, you do what? You uproot them. You uproot them. You, I'm telling you, and I'm telling you the fact, there are some people, when they give testimonies, when they attack them most. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are some people, when they give, that is when things will be hard for them. And the reason why that thing is happening to them is so that they know that that is their, that is the way which they can break through in life. So the enemy will make it difficult so that they will stop giving. So it is, it is when they give their tithes that things will be tight. Tight for them. Everywhere things will be locked. They don't know that it is the strategy of the enemy to stop them. Because that is what will take them to the place of their blessing. So because things become tight, they will, say because they will stop it and their life will remain the same. That is why you pray. Christian pray. We pray to conquer. And we are going to conquer in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said that what you root them out. Let's look at the book of Matthew 15 verse 13. But he answered and said. And he answered and said. Every plant which my heavenly father has not do you, planted. Do you say every plant which my heavenly father has not planted. Shall be rooted, shall be rooted out. Let them alone. Let them alone. They, they be plant leaders. It is okay. Praise the Lord. Every one plant. Whatever you have not planted, you are seeing it. You can't be playing with it. Amen. The Bible said that give and it shall be given unto you. But you give. Instead of you to receive, you are losing money. You are making mistakes. 419, they are 419 you. You must know that I didn't plant this. So. Praise the Lord. The robber is robbing you and you didn't rob people to, to give. So you know that enemy has done this. And this is the way that Satan stopped many people from breaking through. And many people will remain the way their life is. Praise the Lord. I pray that will never be our portion in the name of Jesus. So, it rooted out. So, that is the next thing you do. You rooted out. Anything that grow up. Anything that you have not planted, that you have seen. You stand against it. The language that Satan understands is the language of force. That's why we say, resist the devil. He said, but you must humble yourself before you resist the devil. You resist the devil and he will flee from you. And to resist is not a plate stuff. You must stand and maintain your ground. Praise the Lord. If you want things that are in the hand of God, to flow into your hands. Then you must rise up and do this thing for you to see the result. And surely we are going to see the result in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I believe I answered the question that was asked, I was asked last week. That after some people give with faith, give this. Why is it that they don't see? You pray until something happens. Amen. You pray until you break through. Praise the Lord. 
You Bible said there are devourers in life. You destroy devourers. Do you know that there are a time whereby pests, not only plants, pests, they come and they will devour the thing that the farmer planted, right? What do you think the farmer will do? Will he, will he sit down and be watching them destroy it? What will he do? He will set trap. You too, why don't you set trap? Praise the Lord. The enemy that is wasting your resources. The Bible said that the thief come to steal, to kill, and to do what? And to destroy. Why don't you set trap? Why do you allow them? Camera is just flashing you everywhere. Flashing you. Flashing you. Flashing you. And you don't mind. And remember a particular friend of mine. said the first day that he took where he grew out to drive. It's a car driver. He said, that day, he said he received five tickets. Five tickets. He said that day when he returned, he said his boss said, give me the key. Give me the key. Give me the key. And they took the key from him. He said you are a bad driver. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the living Jesus. Why is that? When you get to where the camera is that to keep speeding, you keep speeding, firing. And you look, oh, he has flashed me again. Praise the Lord. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Do we have any question? My time is fast spent. Conclusion. Yes. Okay. Um, so, um, like, maybe I give, I obey the commandments of God. And yes. So, and I give with expectation. Yes. And there's nothing happening. Mm. So I'll be expecting and expecting all my desire, nothing. Mm. So what should I do? That is what we have just said. Yeah. That's what. I didn't say expectation in low. Did I say expectation in low? Not only expectation, because farmer will not just plant and go and sit down and be expecting. He will not go and wait till the time of harvest. He eh? He will follow up. Those who are those who know about the, the farm do know that it's not an easy thing. It is when the fruit comes out that everybody is enjoying it. But the farmer went through a lot. They went through a lot. Any kind of farming, husband, they went through a lot. Those that are rearing animal. If you know what they go through before that thing produced, it matures and they send it out, it's not easy. So that's why you must put it in your mind. If you want to break through, it's not easy to break through. You have to do what? You have to work it out. Even our salvation was free. But Bible even said, it said, work out your salvation with fear and, and trembling. When you give and nothing happens, and you look at your life, no sin, nothing, nothing. You step up your prayer. Pray more. Because you know that they want to bless something. Praise the Lord. Why should others be giving and they are receiving? Why you are giving and you are losing? Or nothing comes in? Is it not the same God that is our God? Is it not the same Father? You plant crops. I plant my own. Your own. Pests come and eat it. All disease, eat it. And my own, nothing affects it. Are you not going to do something? Eh? You will do something. So that is it. You pray. You pray. And God will reveal the secret to you. If you are serving God sincerely, God will show you the secret. And God will show us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Conclusion, I said, beloved, it is not enough to give. You must protect. You must defend. And you must preserve your giving. Until you have good mayo, price down, shaking together, and running over. You must protect. You must defend it. Until you see it. Before Jesus, before Jesus went to the cross, how, how many times did he pray in the garden? Three times. That is the son of God. And he want to deliver. Praise the Lord. The, what, if I say he prayed... Did he supposed to pray that kind of prayer? He's supposed not to pray that kind of prayer, but he prayed to the extent that the sweat that was coming out of his body was like a drop of the blood. How many of you pray like that for your breakthrough? Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about you, 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 you give and you don't see, and you pray like that, and you think God will not answer. Strong grace. If you can present your strong reason and your employer will release your wages or salary, how come the God 
that is greater than all. You present that strong reason. One thing God doesn't like is that for you to take him by his word. Yeah. If we challenge him with his word, he will never fail. But many times, we don't know how to present our case. So, present your strong reason. Take him by his word. If you present it, you must look for a place in the Bible. That is strategy prayer. Try your prayer. You must look for a place that promises you that thing in the Bible. If you can't find it, there is no basis for faith to. But you are just yelling and doing nothing. Up. You must look for it. If it's healing, go and look for healing, healing promises. Gather them together. Memorize them. And begin to tell him. You will see results. I was discussing with the particular sister how I read a particular book. I read it. I was sick then. I read the book without even prayer. And I received my healing many years ago. It is understanding. And that is what we are passing across. I mean, passing across to us. I want you to bow down your head and I want you to pray to God. That Father, open my mind. Open my mind. Open my eyes. Open my mind. Open my eyes. Any area and every area that Satan has been cheating me. Satan has been defeating me. Father, open my eyes to it in the name of Jesus. That he give me revelation. That he give me insight. In the name of Jesus. And if you are under the sound of my voice, maybe you have not even known the Lord. I want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. I want to surrender your life. Confess your sin unto him. Tell him you are sorry for your error. And tell him to come to your life. And be your Lord and be your God. He will guide you. He will prosper you. He will bless you. If only you can make him your Lord. Make him your Lord tonight and he will write your name in the book of life. And if you are ready, what you need to say is to say unto me, I mean, say after me that Lord Jesus, I have come to you today. I surrender my life unto you. I want to be my Lord. I want to be my Savior. I want to deliver me from this mess. I want you, Lord, even to make me one of your children. I want to write my name in the book of life. I want to erase my name from the book of death. And if you are made, send that prayer with me. Shall we pray? Our Father, we bless you, worship you tonight. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Daddy, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we have sent out the word. Daddy, water this word in the heart of everyone that had in the name of Jesus. And as may that I receive you tonight, O Lord, as their Lord and Savior. Daddy, I pray that you will write your name in the book of life. So we made them, O oh Lord, my God, your children, in the name of Jesus. And I pray that your hand, O oh Lord, will rest upon them. And you will raise their name completely from the book of death and write their name in the book of life. And if you are going to call the righteous in tonight, that they count each and every one of us worthy in the name of Jesus. And is there anyone under the sound of my voice that Satan has been devouring their resources? Daddy, today I put an end to that. I command the devourer to be devoured in the name of Jesus. Daddy, everyone under the sound of my voice, as they follow all these principles and this teaching, Lord my God, let there be results. Let there be testimony. Let there be blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We sanctify our offering and we pray that we use it for your glory in the name of Jesus. Let our life not remain the same. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before we go tonight, I want to remind us, on Sunday, by the grace of God, we are going to meet here at the hour of 9.30 a.m. We are going to start with Believers Academy, then we go to Refreshing Hour. If you want to join us, you can join us in-house, and you can join us online. And God, we bless you in the name of Jesus. Your life will not remain the same in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Shall we rise up on our feet? You can go. Thank you. God bless you. Our hocha. Amen. Let, let, let's rise up uh, as we say the grace of God uh, together. One, two, three, go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. I wish I dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. God bless you in the name of Jesus.